Philippines. Welcome to Florida. Do you know what is the capital city of Florida? This is great! The capital city of Florida is Tallahassee! Good job, young teens! Today is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad as we welcome you back to Young Teens Church Online! Today we have prepared a super fun and exciting session for you. So be excited for praise and worship, SKL series, Bible verse, and the power verse. Are you all excited? That's great because I am excited too. So what are you waiting for? Let us all stand up and let's open this in word of prayer. Let's pray. Almighty and Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you and we honor you for your goodness and your faithfulness in our life. Lord, we ask for forgiveness from all the sins that we have committed. Today, we, we thank you for the wisdom and for the learning that you are going to pour out upon this session today. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Enjoying the scenery here. I think it would be nice if I have my friends with me, don't you think? And speaking of friends, we will talk about a group of friends in the Bible who pursued the Lord through faith and faith. And you know who that is? So that is Daniel and his friends Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So we will learn three things about this man of God. Are you ready? Okay, so who were Daniel and his friends Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They were loyal men who followed God no matter what. 
So they were chosen to be officials to serve King Nebuchadnezzar. But you know what? They remained loyal to God, did not deny Him, and worship Him with all their best. They were courageous men who depended on God. At the time that they were thrown out into the fiery furnace because of their allegiance to God, they were not afraid and depended on God for protection. And behold, the people saw four men walking in the flames without scratch and burns. Isn't it amazing? And number three and the last one, they were men of integrity who did the right thing even in hard times. The king acknowledged that they were one of the brightest and capable men. Above all, they honored God and always speak the truth. Isn't their friendship an inspiration and their faith amazing? It's good to have friends that make you stronger and closer to God, that encourages you to do the right thing. Like Daniel, he has his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So that's it for today, young teens. See you again for another series of SKL. Bye-bye! Hello young teens! Happy New Year! New Year, new ways, new opportunities, and new Bible stories. Well, I guess you are all excited for our Bible story today. Our Bible story today is found in the book of Daniel chapter 1. And this is all about the story of Daniel and his friends. One day, King Nebuchadnezzar selected the smartest and best young men from the prisoners his country had captured during the war and had them brought into his palace. Daniel and his friends were among them. The king knew if he could get them to do what he said, he could turn them away from God and make them serve him instead. So the king brought Daniel and his friends into his court and had his officials begin to teach them all the language of the Babylonians and all of the Babylonian customs. He tried to get to forget them all of their Jewish customs and religion. Daniel and his friends recognized what the king was doing and didn't listen to what he had to say. For a moment. So then the king placed before them a banquet table of food and wine. The problem was the food and wine were against what God had instructed them to eat. God told them to eat only certain kinds of food, but the king was forcing them to make a choice. The question is, were they going to obey the Lord or were they going to obey the king? Definitely, Daniel and his friends decided to obey the Lord. So Daniel and his friends had a choice to make. They could choose to compromise or break God's rules, following the crowd just like everybody else, or they could choose to obey the Lord. What do you think they choose? They choose not to go against what the Lord had told them, even if it meant that they would be sent out of the king's palace and back to prison. They were not going to compromise. So Daniel and his friends went to the king's officials and said, I would like to ask permission to eat only the food that God has commanded us to eat. Did you notice something? Daniel didn't go up to the chief official and say, Listen, I am not going to do what you say. God said not to, and I am not going to listen to what you say. So there. Daniel chose to do what was right, but he did it with the right attitude. He asked for permission. So Daniel told the chief official he had a plan. He said, Let me and my friends choose to eat the food that God has commanded us to eat. Let all the other young men eat the king's food and wine. At the end of 10 days, if we don't look stronger and healthier, then you can punish us. The chief official agreed, and Daniel and his friends ate only the food that God has told them to eat. 10 days passed, and it was time to compare them. And guess what? Not only did Daniel and his friends look just as good as the others, but they looked better, stronger, and healthier. The chief official saw that they were stronger and wiser than all the rest. He decided they were allowed to eat the food that God had told them to eat, and they were appointed to the king's service. And that ends the part one of our Bible story. What we can learn from the story of Daniel? 
we learn from the story that Daniel and his friends remain faithful to the one true God by refusing to make themselves unclean by eating the king's food. They chose to obey God even if that meant being different from everyone else. Their obedience to God pleased the Lord and because of that, the Lord blessed them. Young teens, always remember to remain faithful to God and obey the Lord no matter what because when we obey God, the Lord will surely bless us. Young teens, I know that you like our Bible story today and you want more. Well, we will continue the story of Daniel and his friends on our next episodes. So see you next time. God bless everyone. Bye-bye. you learned something today? We want to know what are your thoughts about our story. It's time for some fun and engaging activity. We want to ask the help of the parent or guardian as we have our family devotion. Just download the form through the link that we have provided on the description above. We have prepared a series of helpful questions that you can go through with your parent or guardian. Please answer the questions as honestly as you can. It's the best bonding time for your parent or guardian. Please do it right after this video. And just a simple reminder for the parents or guardian. Please don't forget to pray for your young kids. Thank you for your participation. God bless everyone. some steps are you ready for some dancing so come on let's go okay so the first step is be holy in every aspect of your life just as God who called you to be holy okay so let's take it slow once again be holy in every aspect of your life just as God who called you to be holy. Okay, so let's make it faster. Be holy in every aspect of your life, just as God who called you is holy. So you got it? You're doing a good job. Yay! So that's it for our power verse. Bye-bye. See you again. The Bible. It's one of the most influential books in human history. It explores the big questions of why we exist. It's inspired many people to do amazing things. And confused many others. And you've probably got one sitting around somewhere. So, what is the Bible actually? Well, the Bible is a small library of books that all emerged out of the history of the people of ancient Israel. And in one sense, they were just like any other ancient civilization. But among them were a long line of individuals called prophets. And they viewed Israel's story as anything but ordinary. They saw it as a central part of what God was doing for all humanity. And these prophets were literary geniuses. Really? Yeah, they expertly crafted the Hebrew language to write epic narratives, very sophisticated poetry. They were masters of metaphor and storytelling, and they leveraged all of this to explore life's most complicated questions about death and life and the human struggle. So there's a lot of different authors writing this book. Yeah, and these texts were produced over a thousand year period, starting with Israel's origins in Egypt, then leading up to their kingdom with their first temple. But eventually they were conquered by the Babylonians who took them away into exile. Then, at a crucial moment in their history, many Israelites returned to their land. They built a second temple, they reformed their identity, and this is when the Jewish scriptures began to be formed into the shape that we have them today. Okay, the Jewish Bible, what's in it? Well, in Hebrew, it's called by an acronym, Tanakh. 
The T stands for Torah, sometimes called the law. That's Israel's five-book foundation story. The N stands for Nevi'im, the Hebrew word for prophets. And this section consists of the historical books that tell Israel's story from the prophet's point of view. Then you get the poetic books of the prophets themselves. The K stands for Ketavim, the Hebrew word for writings. This is a diverse collection of poetic books, wisdom books, and more narrative. And the Jewish people believe that through all of these literary works, God speaks to his people. Now, there were other Jewish writings being produced during this Second Temple period as well. Yeah, a really diverse group of texts. And these two were highly valued in Jewish communities. And there was debate from ancient times about whether or not some of these should be considered part of their scriptures. So this is a lot of different writings over a long period of time. Why did they put them all together like this? Well, altogether, these texts tell an epic story about how God is working through these people to bring order and beauty out of the chaos of our world. And it all builds up to a hope for a new leader who would come and renew all creation. And then the Tanakh concludes, and this leader never comes. So it's an expertly crafted work, but it's missing an ending? That's exactly right. Now, a few centuries later, a Jewish prophet comes onto the scene named Jesus of Nazareth. He claimed he was carrying the Tanakh story forward. Yeah, so Jesus did a bunch of cool stuff was killed, but his followers claimed he was alive from the dead. Yeah, they said that Jesus was that long-awaited leader who would restore the world. And so his earliest followers, called apostles, they composed new literary works about the story of Jesus. They called these good news or the gospel. They formed an account called Acts about the spread of the Jesus movement outside of Israel. And then they circulated letters to different Jesus communities all around the ancient world. And they saw these writings as part of the scripture. Yeah, the apostles wrote all of this as the fulfillment of that epic story found in the Tanakh. And they were continuing the literary genius of the Jewish tradition. They also believed that God was speaking to his people through these texts alongside the scriptures of Israel. So that's the Old and New Testament. But what did the early Christians think of the other Second Temple literature? Well, different groups had different views about some of these books, but we know they read them and valued these texts because they passed them along with the Jewish scriptures. Okay, so we've got the Tanakh, the Jewish scriptures. We've got these other Second Temple period works. Then the writing of the apostles about Jesus. And that's a lot of literature, so what's in my Bible? So the Christian movement has taken different forms over 2,000 years, and from the beginning, all Christians recognized the Tanakh and the New Testament as scripture. And for centuries, much of the Second Temple literature was read as part of the biblical tradition. The Catholic Church eventually made it official and called some of the books from this collection the Deuterocanonical books. Some Orthodox churches used even more books from this Second Temple literature. And then in the 1500s, during the Reformation, Protestant Christians wanted to go back to the oldest writings of the prophets and apostles, so they accepted only the Old and New Testaments. Okay, I think I got it. But... How does a collection of books produced over a thousand years by all these different authors tell one unified story? Yeah, that's the question we'll address in our next video. Father, Lord, we thank you for the super fun session that you have prepared for us today. Help us to apply what we have learned and to depend on you every day of our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This has been a super fun Sunday, young peace. See you again next week. Goodbye.